We are working to revitalize our language, increase the quality of our homes, develop economic opportunities, take over the management of our fisheries and oceans, and enhance our governance. The main intent of the agreement was to close the socioeconomic gap between Helsinki and, and the rest of the world, um, bringing more opportunities to our people through license acquisition or quota acquisition, bringing upgrades to the Bella Bella fish plant. Through Hates Institute, we're going to have our first ever Hates Okla building. With Shearwater, we have purchased a fishing resort. Recognizing that ecotourism is something that we can do within our community and we can have our members running the ships. We can have our members interpreting our history as Helsic people. We care for our elders and right now they are spending some of their last days in hospital. So we have five million dollars going towards uh, an elders long-term care facility. Our plan is to create as many jobs as we can as we move forward through these projects. To date, 90 members have either received home renovations or had a job through the HD suit process. The elders were not okay with the word reconciliation. When somebody is reconciling, they're reconciling because two parties uh, did wrong to each other. The elders were very clear with us and said, we didn't do anything wrong. The governments took away our land, took away our way of life. We have members that have lived their formative years in a residential school. We're sitting in this beautiful big house, yet Canada had outlawed our, our potlatching system for many years. So we have this really shameful history. We told federal and provincial government, if we are gonna go down any path, we would have to look back and right the wrongs of the past. Eighth cease to was the word that the elders wanted us to use instead of reconciliation. And eighth cease to means to turn things around and make things right again. The priority topics was housing and infrastructure, marine and fisheries, economic development, and language preservation and revitalization are looked at as house posts because our big house has four main house posts inside. And then there's the overarching house post of self-government or self-determination, which will incorporate every one of the other house posts. This process is defined by Helsic. We're not engaged in a treaty process with British Columbia or Canada. We have no mandate to give up any title or rights. So our AC suit process uh, is based on a mandate that was given by our joint leadership. This process that we're going on called Tuagila means to create a pathway forward. We're actually pushing the government to make sure that it's not based on common law and Supreme Court decisions for title, that it is based on inherent rights and jurisdiction and that is through our hereditary chiefs. We are cautious in every step that we make because everything that we do, we want to make sure that we're doing it right and that we're doing it for the benefit of the community and we're not going to bring any harm to our community. What we want to do is strengthen what we have to close those socio and economic gaps, to build better relationships, to support our community. And if at any given point the federal or provincial government are not able to meet us at the mandates given by their 10 principles, we can walk away. We are not looking to give up our Indian status. The provincial and federal governments can go down this path while still taking care of everything that they have through fiduciary responsibilities, such as medications and health care and education. These funds are managed by the Helsic Tribal Council. So we have an implementation manager and some finance clerks and, and others to really help manage those projects and those funds to make sure they're spent where they should be and also that we're recording everything as we go along in a transparent way. The federal and provincial government asked Helsic, what does reconciliation look like to you? And we weren't able to do that without engaging our membership. So up until COVID, we were able to host uh, focus groups. A community member actually said, you know, maybe we should break these down into 
I know, one house post per meeting. We've been able to have uh, over 80 meetings uh, publicly uh, talking about self-government and all the other house posts. We want to continue to have those conversations with you. As responsible technical staff and negotiators for the people, we're making that commitment to you that we will obligate ourselves to engage with you in, in a meaningful way where your voices and your input will be implemented into what the self-government agreement will look like. Whether we're in Bella Bella or whether in the lower mainland, no matter where people live, we'll have an opportunity to have this conversation with you. I would like to encourage you to come out to community engagement sessions in the future to hear regular updates of the HDSU process and to give your perspective on how to continue this process. All around the community, there's new jobs being created. There's homes being worked on. Sometimes I just have to sit back and, and really take a look at everything that we've worked so hard for is actually coming to life. I'm fortunate enough to see a dream become a reality for those that worked on language revitalization before me. My mentors, some of them have since passed. They paved the way for us. The more people that we have trained, the more people that we have with education that can fulfill these jobs, whether it's over here in Shearwater, whether it's their own entrepreneurship venture out on our grounds, only good can come from this. And, you know, I'm excited to see where our nation goes. You're the reason why we're doing this.